Hey there, I am Trolls and I'm gonna tie a fly called Hutune today. A fly that I'm, I've been using a lot this year and a fly I've been working on for a few years now. Um, I've been fishing with this fly here in the fjord and had some good success on it. And uh, it's a fairly easy fly to tie. It's, uh, it's a fun fly to tie. And it's got some features that works very good with sea trout, especially in the fjord, but also on the open coast. You can fish this fly slowly. You can make it hover in the water, go down very slowly. And it's, can, it can be very, very good, especially for tricky trout. And we are going to start off by tying it on a A-Rex light stinger hook in a size 4. I tie a lot of my flies on the, on the size 4, a bigger size than many other coastal sea trout flies. Uh, I like the, the gap of this hook, it's wide, for, especially for bigger trout, they're hooked nicely in the outer part of the mouth, so you have a, when you hook a trout, you will probably get it all the way in most of the time, this hook. And we're gonna use a DSP thread, a very tough thread. We're gonna put some, uh, we're gonna put some, uh, some strength on our materials to keep them nice and tight on the hook, and uh, and hopefully these flies can catch a lot of fish. And uh, we're also gonna add a lot of materials on it. We're gonna brush them out later. It's a fairly big fly, and um, all the materials also. It does that the fly has a very good movement in the water. It's not going to go down. We're not going to use any uh, lead on this fly or other uh, heavy materials. The fly is going to work very good in the water and almost have the capabilities of standing still in the water when you pause your retrieves. You're going to put the thread on all the way up to the hook bend here gonna have a decent amount of materials on this fly so we want to have some space for all the materials and first off we need some very fluorescent dubbing here I'm using a Samo Supreme dubbing here we could use other similar dubbings and um, the most important thing is that this dubbing is highly visible and also fluorescent it's gonna give a nice butt section to the fly or a mouth part on the shrimp when you see the shrimp from behind and we're going to use a, rarely, a fairly big amount of dubbing here. This fluorescent dubbing here gives a good contrast to the other colors in the fly. We're going to tie it in as a little ball here on the back of the fly. We're going to use this for attaching other materials and make them spread. And we need to brush it out a bit. Separate the fibers here. Like so. And then we need the, the eyes on the shrimp fly. Here we are using uh, each shrimp eyes and that comes in, comes in two different sizes. This is the small uh, size. It's very nice details for a shrimp fly. We're going to push it all the way up to this ball here and make the eyes separate a bit. We want the eyes to be just in before the hook starts to bend. We want to make sure here that the eyes are attached nice, nicely to the dubbing here so it doesn't twist when we are fishing it. We're gonna make some hard wraps here, turns here to secure it. And then we can take the eyes a little bit out apart here. We're also going to use the eyes to keep the material which we're going to tie on now in between the eyes. Get a nice control of the materials. Now we're going to add some flash to the fly, some antennas for the shrimp. We're using these pearl and orange, highly. The orange uh, flash here is, is very uh, fluorescent. It's, uh, and Pretty stiff, very good material for making antennas or or mouth parts of the, the fly. 
we're gonna find one in orange and one in in uh, in the pearl flesh. Like so, then we'll take two out. Ooh. Cut them off. Then we need to grab this flesh around the center of them, and then we tie it in first on the, on the middle of the flesh, and then we're gonna bend it backwards. Then we're gonna secure the flesh, but we're also gonna spread the flesh a bit apart so it doesn't uh, clump up in the back. Like so, and then we're bending it back, and then we are gonna separate the flesh a bit. So the materials have a better movement in the water. We can cut a bit of the excess off here. We don't want too long. And we're going to keep a little bit of variation in the length here so they don't clash together like so. And then we're going to add one of the most important things to this fly is the rubber legs here. We're using normal round rubber legs here in the fluorescent orange. And I wanna, I want to cut them off so we have both of them ready and separated before we tie them in. Then it's easier to align them where we want them, like so. And just put them in the middle, in between the, the eyes of the shrimp eyes here. And I can line them so. And I can see I want them actually to go on each side of the flash fibers. First, just make sure that they're going to stay in here. Tie them nicely down. Some good wraps. And we have them secured. And then we're going to align one on each side, just underneath the eye here. And then it's kind of important that we do some very loose wraps here to keep them in placement. And then we're going to tie, some, tie them all down after that. The loose wraps will make sure that don't get pushed up when you push this or when you tie it uh, hard down on this uh, rubber material. They will often just be pushed up in the air. We don't want that one uh, rubber legs to be nice and straight out of the fly here at the back. And to keep these materials nice and tight, I'm gonna choose a feather now um, and take some of the fibers off that feather and align them on top. Then we keep the materials nice and tight where we want them. So I'm gonna take my um, my uh, cock cape here, this is in a uh, ginger color. I'm gonna choose one of the feathers from the back of this uh, this cape here. A feather that has fairly long fibers on it, so I can take the fibers off and tie them in. So I'm gonna take one like this, take the fluffy part off so it's easier to see. This one has some nice long feathers. I'm gonna grab them with my, my fingers here. If you want, if you want a fly that has a good uh, tapering and proportions like a shrimp, you actually want a bunch of them here, and then you can put them in on top. And that way, we can push them on top of the materials and keep all the underlying materials nice and, and straight there, and also give some a good tapered uh, proportion or feel to the shrimp fly, which is very very good to have. We're not gonna make a we're not gonna make a uh, a shrimp, uh, uh, shrimp uh, back on this fly. We are going to use the other haggles to and, and form the proportions as we want them. So this is a good thing to do to get the right proportions by tying these in on top here. And then we're going to tie the excess in, so we have some more material on the body here. We can also use that when we're tying the dubbing in to make it stick more to the fly. And then we have the back of the fly. You can also see now it's very bold in the back, and now we want to taper it and getting lighter and lighter all the way to the fruit guy. And uh, then we need another uh, feather here to uh, palm hack it all the way to the front later on. We want, a, we want a feather that's a bit smaller than the other one. Go to the, the middle of the, of the neck here and find one. This. One like this, it's good. Have a good, uh, some good long fibers in the end, but also not too long. 
that we're gonna take the excess of the feather here. She's got almost like a marabou kind of uh, fibers down here. We, want, we don't want them. So we take the excess off here. Now we wanna tie this feather in on the fly, facing with the, with the blank surface uh, towards uh, the tire. Tie it in nice and strong here so it doesn't go off when we are gonna wrap it around or palm high on it. And then we are going all the way back to the hook eye. And then we're gonna build up the, the, the body of the fly with the dubbing. And we're gonna use some very translucent dubbing here, some uh, STF dubbing. It's very good dubbing for shrimp flies. And uh, first we're gonna lay, put a, a nice and tight layer all the way back and then we're gonna tie it back again with a more fluffy layer. And uh, we want the proportions of the fly to be tapered so we're gonna tie more dubbing in on the back here. We go a few times and now we can always see it, it got this tapered proportion. And we want to do that again, one more time, all the way to the, the front of the fly again. This fly is going to have a lot of materials on it, but we're going to use the brush later to get them out so they can work when you, uh, with the other materials. And especially when you're fishing this fly, we're going to blend in the haggle fibers with the dubbing, we're going to have a nice look to it. And now we just work our way all the way back again. Just need a little bit of room here to make a nice ending to the fly. She now got the, the right proportions. Now we're going to use a dubbing brush just a little bit here to loosen up and make it more fluffy before we, we take the hackle and go all the way back. With. And palming the hand. Like so. Then we're gonna grab the haggle here and work our way all the way to the hook eye again. I'm gonna take the haggle and push it a bit into the dubbing here so we get it nice and tight because when we're gonna brush out all the fibers we want it to be to be mixed in with the dubbing so it, the fly gets can gets more um, tough you know you can catch a lot of fish on this fly and we want it to to be fishable for a long time I'm going to secure the, the haggle here. I'll wrap it a few times and take the materials backwards and secure it again. You just use a brush here to take some of the dubbing out. Now we're actually going to take the whip finisher and just uh, and the fly here, we're gonna use another thread afterwards. Just before we're gonna, we're gonna brush out all the materials, we wanna have secured the fly a bit. And now we're gonna work all the dubbing out. We have a lot of dubbing on this fly, so it's, it's very important that we uh, get all the materials spread out here. We can take the excess of this, uh, the haggle we just pumped all the way down here. Take that one off. Now we're gonna get the right proportions when we're working on the, on the haggle fibers here. We can use our fingers here to make the haggle fibers 
bend backwards. And then we're going to end the fly now with a highly visible orange thread to make the last detail of the fly. Here you can use some uh, super glue or UV glue if you wanted to get an even stronger finish. Then we're going to use the, the whip finish again. Like so. And then we are actually done with the Hutu, the Pitchfork, the Hay Thief, whatever you like to call it. You can still work a bit of, on the dubbing here and the, the heckle fibers. But when you start fishing it, the, the fibers will be aligned or will be pulled backwards so you get the right proportions. Fun fly to tie and uh, very efficient for tricky trout, especially in the fjord. There you go, that was the Hutu 